Hello, everybody. It's Alice Ginsberg again. And today I am going to take you on what I would say a rather unconventional tour of the Amalfi Coast in Italy. The first picture that I have up for you right now is a, a photo going towards the Isle of Capri where there are these interesting rock formations. And I am with a tour group in a small boat uh, heading toward the Blue Grotto, which is on the Isle of Capri. And this is the opening to the Blue Grotto. You can see how gorgeous the water looks. Uh, we went into the grotto a short way but uh, none of my pictures came out. It was very dark and all you get is a sort of a flash. So I apologize for that. But this is the famous Blue Grotto. And here we are leaving. And you can see it's a fairly busy place. There's another tour boat going through the archway here in the rock formation. And we are on uh, this tour boat, of course. Um, we had spectacular weather, and uh, it was a fascinating uh, tour to the Blue Grotto. On the way back, as it happened, we actually had to rescue another tour boat that had gone dead in the water. Here is a picture of the interior of a restaurant in Sorrento, Italy. Sorrento was our base of operations for this tour of the Amalfi Coast. And this restaurant is called Caruso's. And it's dedicated to the famous opera singer. And you could see there are pictures of Enrico Caruso all over the walls. The owner of this restaurant is a cousin of Enrico Caruso. We had a fabulous meal here. The famous Amalfi Coast. This is the famous picture you see all the time. I took this one from um, an overlook in Sorrento. Here is a street in Sorrento. So you could see the shops and fairly narrow street. People touring, beautiful goods. I will tell you that I bought a blouse on the Isle of Capri and it's a, a very dressy white blouse. And I got back to Sorrento and found out that I had paid, overpaid for it quite a bit in Capri. This is the uh, village of Positano on the Amalfi Coast. Very famous tourist destination. And this is Amalfi. And this, the cathedral, of course, is what stands out. Here we're coming into Amalfi. You can see the cathedral here in the center, lower portion of the slide, and all of the colorful buildings. One of the many yachts that you will find along the Amalfi Coast. Would you not, wouldn't you want to be on this vessel touring Italy? She looks very sleek and yar. She was quite beautiful and she was quite large. Your hilltop views. Here we are again, coming in. You could see all the uh, small mini buses uh, lined up here to take tourists uh, through the town. We elected to walk 
uh, around uh, in the town of Amalfi. So that we could uh, have our own timing as we uh, peered into shop windows and uh, if we wanted to buy something, you know, we could barter with the merchants. We wanted to be on our own time schedule. Notice here, it's very faint, but you can see it, the mosaic in the church, in the church here. Look in the center of the slide in the triangle. The Cathedral of Amalfi. Again, here is that mosaic I was trying to show you in the last slide. And there were some very steep, very long stairs, and it was quite hot when we were there. So we decided not to climb up all of these stairs, but you can get a sense of how majestic this building is. Here is a mosaic showing uh, Amalfi and uh, all of the trade that is going on. This mosaic can be found at the beach uh, as you come into Amalfi. And you can see the mosaic depicts the church, the cathedral over here, a little bit left of center. There's a monk standing outside. And you see all of the tradespeople and the merchants coming in on their ships. This would have been in the, hmm, I would say, the 14 or 1500s. Here's another mosaic that you find at the beach in Amalfi. It shows Italy, Greece, and the Eastern Mediterranean. And you have Neptune coming out of the water here with his pitchfork um, and all these different ships. The square in Sorrento, very uh, imposing. These are some of the things that are for sale in Sorrento. Beautiful handiwork, as you can see. Here you've got Viagra Natural. For five euros, you too can have hot red peppers. More stores. This is the famous Amalfi Cross. You can see it on this blue t-shirt here to the left. You have your pizza and upscale clothing and lots of tourists. We went to a town called Postum. Postum is the site of a buffalo mozzarella farm. These are Cape buffaloes that, are, uh, that have been brought to Italy. Then they are uh, bred and they are treated to quite the life of leisure so that they will produce cheese. And uh, these buffaloes have a routine you can see the ones over to the right are resting. Uh, they are trained to go into the milking station. They're very smart animals. They're trained to go into the milking station one by one. And when the milking is finished, the gate opens and they leave and they go and get massaged. After they are massaged, they go and eat. And after they eat, they rest and then the cycle starts again. They go to the milking station, they go for massage, they go to eat, they go to rest. This farm in Pestum 
is very famous for its mozzarella cheese. When you order a caprese salad in a, uh, an Italian restaurant, you will be served a buffalo mozzarella cheese. Here they are. Getting, they're leaving uh, their resting station. They're getting massaged. See how these two animals are being massaged here. It's a little bit like the brushes um, uh, in a car wash. Quite a specimen. They're lining up here to be milked. This uh, gentleman was curious uh, for the tourists, and he took a special liking to the um, duster I was wearing. And uh, he licked me as I petted him, and then he tried to eat my duster. Pestum also is the site of a uh, full Parthenon to scale. It's about um, a third to half the scale of the Parthenon in Athens, but it is much better preserved because the Parthenon in Athens uh, was um, the scene of uh, Turkish fighting in the late 1800s, and the Turks had an ammunition dump in on the Acropolis and it exploded. So this is actually, even though it's smaller scale, this is actually a better preservation of the Parthenon. In the Naples Museum, there are wonderful antiquities. Uh, a lot of shards, pottery shards, um, uh, some mosaics, but what attracted us was uh, the collection of sculptures. These are from the Naples Museum. I like this one. The curator has a sense of humor and we have Yoda dressed up as the Pope. That's Yoda from Star Wars. Back to the Roman sculptures. And this is the castle. This is the castle fortress on the seaside in Naples. Notice the mountains in the background. This is Mount Vesuvius. When she erupted uh, back, uh, when she destroyed Pompeii, uh, she blew her top and that is what created the smaller cone to the left. The cone to the right is the dormant volcano Vesuvius. Street scene in Naples. Uh, the promenade was full of people full of people, uh, there were pantomimes. This gentleman all the way to the left was uh, working a, um, an electric car and captivating the children. He's dressed as a clown. There were gymnasts dancing. It was quite the street scene. And then we went to Pompeii. And here we are among the ruins of Pompeii. This was a dressing room in the bathhouse. Mosaics. Here are the walls of a home, a very wealthy home in Pompeii. More mosaics. Your first fast food restaurant here in Pompeii, Italy. This was where they did the cooking and the heating and the counter 
And this was over the counter uh, service at this restaurant. Some of you, I think, may have been to Pompeii and seen this. Here you have uh, an olive press and an oven. A very wealthy home in Pompeii. Check out the frescoes. Look at that. Is that not magnificent? The floor is original. Some of the walls have been restored and some are original. The wall on the side has been restored, but the wall at the back is original. And yes, it, we're in Italy where some of the uh, most famous labels originate. And this is a, a street painting of Dolce & Gabbana. It's a, this is in front of the Dolce & Gabbana store in Sorrento. I think I'm wrong about that. I think this is in Naples. And then we went to Sardinia. And I will tell you, this is an unusual trip, of course, to the Amalfi Coast. Um, why did we go to Sardinia? I will tell you that a little bit later in this presentation. In the meantime, this is the entrance to the museum at Sardinia. It was a former palace, as you will see. Check out the ceiling. Very beautiful structure. This is a chapel. And this is a modern art sc uh, sculpture in uh, Cal Calhari, Sardinia. I thought it was kind of interesting as opposed to the Baroque Renaissance Chapel. This is the sort of thing you find in Cagliari. We were privileged to have a physicist from uh, Naples, the university in Naples take us around Sardinia. This is a Neolithic um, mound that uh, you see many of them around Sardinia. Uh, sometimes you're allowed to go in. You can see there are stairs to go in, but they, they strictly limit by appointment. And um, we were not allowed to go into the mound, but these mounds have been dated back to Neolithic times. And this is a uh, crusader castle overlooking one of the bays in Sardinia. Roman ruins. You can see that the history of Sardinia, uh, the oldest date is Neolithic times, but then you have Roman times as evidenced here. And then you have uh, medieval crusader times as evidenced by this castle. So you have many different layers of history going on in Sardinia. Here's a more expansive view of the Roman ruins. It was quite the seaside town. Very prosperous. It was a trading and fishing town.
a view of Cagliari, Sardinia, taken from the rooftop of our hotel. And you can see the sweeping bay in the background and the mountains in the further background. Cagliari is the um, uh, capital, if you will, of Sardinia and the largest city. A, a seaside bay, Sardinia is dotted with these seaside bays. We had lunch at a restaurant here. The fish had literally just been plucked from the sea and it, they were delicious. You can see this is a resort and the people are bathing and there's a restaurant here over to the left center and the water is really this blue. Here we are at Antas, uh, Greek, uh, Greek and Roman ruins. This is a, a Greek temple that was built here to worship one of the Greek gods. And this tells you that there are also Roman ruins of uh, Sardinia, and the name of this place is Antas. They erected this um, they, they erected this monument in 1976, but this uh, history of this place goes back to 500 A, it says AC, after Christ. Here we are in the Roman temple. This is me in the center and my physicist friend, Dr. Alberto Devoto, and his uh, mentee, a young lady named Gabriella, who was going for her doctorate in physics. Gabriella was our translator. Alberto uh, is uh, uh, semi-fluent, I would say, in English, and uh, he brought Gabriella along uh, to do the driving, because Alberto says he's a terrible driver, and uh, to also do some his, uh, translation of history for us. We spent an entire day with them. You're wondering why I am showing you this. This is old equipment at a coal mine in Sardinia. This coal mine has been abandoned. And the reason that I was traveling and touring with Alberto was because he is involved with a man named Cristiano Galbiati, and they are doing research in dark matter. And I am going to try and explain dark matter to you. It's a sort of a, a fundamental mini lesson in physics, but these, this group of physicists is going to use this abandoned coal mine to purify argon that is taken out of the ground and is also already fairly pure, but they need to refine it and make it absolutely pure for their experiments. So this is the old tower and pulley structure for the coal mine. I was there in 2016, and not too much work had been done on reconverting this old coal mine at this point. From what I understand from Alberto, this coal mine is now uh, up and running uh, as a, uh, an argon purifying facility. And it began operations in 2019. So you get a sense of what the site looks like and the apparatus. We walked up to the top here. It was uh, quite steep, quite rusty, but it was, it was really interesting. I'm going to uh, stop here and explain a little bit about what's going on 
with these physicists. Dark energy is the name given to the force that is believed to be making the universe, our universe, larger. Distant galaxies appear to be moving away from us at high speed. The idea is that the universe is getting bigger and has been since the Big Bang. There is another explanation for dark energy. Some people think it's a new kind of dynamical energy fluid or field, something that fills all the space, but something whose effect on the expansion of the universe is the opposite of what we would think of as normal energy and normal matter. In physical cosmology and astronomy, dark energy is an unknown form of energy that affects the universe on the largest scales. Dark energy was discovered in 1998 by two teams of astronomers who measured light coming from exploding stars called type, a, type 1A supernovae, known as standard candles for their consistent brightness. So physicists are saying that dark energy is a hypothetical form of energy that exerts a negative repulsive pressure behaving the opposite of gravity. People, some people think that uh, the observational properties of distant supernovae show the universe going through an accelerated period of expansion. Uh, we only have indirect evidence for dark energy, but it comes from three sources. And what's going on here with these physicists, they measure, they measure distance measurements and their relationship, uh, which suggests the universe has expanded more in the last half of its life. And as I said, dark energy is the name that we give to this unexplained force that is drawing galaxies away from each other, anti-gravity, where gravity pulls things together uh, at a more local level, like here on Earth, dark energy tugs them apart on a grand scale. It's called dark because it does not appear to interact with observable electromagnetic radiation, such as light. Light is electromagnetic radiation. So it's not detectable by existing astronomical instruments. It turns out that roughly 68%, 68% of the universe is dark energy. Dark matter makes up about 27% of our universe. Dark matter, that's um, substance, substantial things. Everything on earth, everything ever observed with all of our instruments through history, all normal matter in the universe adds up to less than 5% of the universe. So you think about that. 68% of the universe is comprised of this dark energy. Yet we still don't know what makes up dark matter. We only know that it exists because of the gravitational pull it has on galaxies pulling them away from each other. There was a new study done by my friend Cristiano Galbati and Alberto Devoto in 2016 that hints, hints, that extremely light particles called neutrinos make up some of the dark matter. This challenges our understanding of the composition of dark matter. Neutrinos are very important to the study of supernovas because neutrinos provide an early warning signal and allow scientists to be looking in the correct direction before the supernova explosion even takes place. But they're very difficult to study because neutrinos, neutrinos are teensy tiny. Near, they nearly have any mass at all. 
particles, subatomic particles that travel at a speed almost of the speed of light. They are born of astrophysical events such as exploding stars and gamma ray bursts. If you hold your hand up to the sunlight for one second, about a billion neutrinos will pass through your hand. But because they have almost no mass and no electric charge, they are important uh, to our understanding of what goes on in our sun and are one of the building blocks of nature, but very difficult to study. So scientists headed by Cristiano Galbati uh, work at a laboratory underneath a mountain in Italy. It's called Gran Sasso Mountain. And uh, they hurl beams of light from uh, CERN, which is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, that they have a laboratory in Switzerland, and they hurl these beams of light through the mountains to Italy, and it comes to Gran Sasso. Uh, and neutrinos uh, travel almost at the speed of light, 186,500 miles a second, so it's very quick. Scientists here in the United States are doing the same thing, hurling beams of light from Wisconsin to a laboratory in northern Minnesota, where there's a team of Fermi lab, uh, scientists uh, working on the same thing. Anyway, I had the privilege of having to do some legal work when I was working for these physicists. And that is how I met Alberto Devoto and how I got to Sardinia. And here we have a very interesting rock formation off the coast of Sardinia. This puts that formation in a little bit of context for you. And this is the geologic formation in the background in this picture. In this background to the right, you see things like this. And here are myself and my husband. We had to travel two miles underground and get security clearance to go to this laboratory, which is under Gran Sasso Mountain. This laboratory is underneath a mountain. It is also underneath a lake within the mountain. And the properties of this mountain with this lake make it possible to study neutrinos, which are these subatomic particles that will lead us to a better understanding of dark energy. This is a map of the laboratory underneath Gran Sasso. These are all, they look like pipes, but they're all corridors filled with equipment to measure and analyze the light beams coming from Switzerland. So, they need argon that is being, that's being purified now at that abandoned coal mine in Sardinia. They need argon because it's odorless, colorless, and it is 40% denser than water. Remember, we're on, under an underground lake here at Gran Sasso. And argon makes it a good target for neutrinos, enabling these physicists to study their properties. Here's a picture of me and Alberto Devoto on Sardinia in that uh, bay, in that landscape that I had shown you previously. My role uh, in this project was to uh, write a facility access agreement because the argon that these physicists harvest is from southwestern Colorado. And I had to uh, craft a legal agreement to enable them to harvest their argon. It happens to be some of the purest argon on the planet Earth. And then they, and then they further purify it at that abandoned coal mine, now an argon purifier site. 
here we are in back in Sorrento, full of tourists, cafes, shops. You see the church in the background. And where the, this awning is to the left, that is the square in Sorrento. One of the many churches in Sorrento. The rooftops of Sorrento, looking across the bay to Naples and, and Mount Vesuvius, Mount Vesuvius in the background. This shot was taken from the top, the rooftop of our hotel in Sorrento. So as I said, this is a fairly um, unconventional view of the Amalfi Coast, and I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, coupled with a, uh, a rather fundamental physics lesson in dark energy and dark matter. But uh, I have to tell you, this trip was fascinating, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you.